Okay, well, in uh, this next video, we're going to continue in section 1.5 talking about solving equations. We're going to look at some different types of equations here. Let's, let's talk about absolute value equations. Remember this from uh, your algebra classes? When you have an, an equation that says absolute value of x is 4, remember what that means? That means that x is 4 units away from 0. Now, it could be on either side. The distance that x is from 0 is, is, is 4. So graphically, think of it like this. It could be 4 units to the right or 4 units to the left. So the solution to this equation would be x equals plus or minus 4. In general, the rule is when you have an absolute value of, of, of a equals b, that means that um, a has to equal plus or minus b. So if you have an equation like this, absolute value of 2x plus 3 equals 5, why don't you hit the pause button, see if you can solve this one. You end up with what's inside the absolute value bars equals 5, or what's inside the absolute value bars is negative 5. So you should have had this as a next step. You always break it up, you're going to get two separate equations here. And when you solve each one separately, here you would subtract 3 from both sides, so x equals 1. Here you would uh, subtract 3 from both sides, so 2x is negative 4, x, 2x is negative 8, so x is negative 4. There's two solutions. And you could, you could check these. You could plug both of these into the equation, and they should both check. Um, why don't you try this one? Go ahead and hit the pause button, see if you can do this one. Okay, I should have warned you, this is kind of sneaky. When you go to solve this, you should first subtract 3 from both sides. Did you do that? And then uh, you should get the absolute value by itself. You should, you should get, uh, so you divide by negative 2 and you end up with this. Now at this point, you should realize this equation has no solution. Do you know why? It has no solution because the absolute value of something, remember, is its distance away from 0. How can something be a distance away from 0 that is negative 3 units? It's impossible. The absolute value of something can never be less than 0. It could equal 0, but it could never be neg negative. Uh, if you went ahead and saw, so anyway, you, you, should, you should stop at that point and say no solution. However, if you did make a mistake and continue, when you, as long as you checked your answer, you would have seen that none of them are going to check. Anyway, so be careful on that. The, if you have an absolute value equation, um, set it equal to something that's negative, you should, there's no solution. Alright, well, let, let's do something else for a while, and then I'll give you a couple to try. How about that? Let's talk about formulas. Those are used in a lot of your science classes. We call those literal equations. That's just uh, an equation that involves more than one unknown, more than one vari variable. And if, if that's the case, and you ha you ha you ha if, you're, if you're trying to solve that, you have to be it has to specify which variable you're trying to solve for. Okay. So again, these are things from your everything we've done so far has really been a review. So go ahead and see if you can do this one on your own. We'll go over it in just a minute. Okay, well, it is an equation that has fractions. What do you do when you have an equation that has fractions? You can get rid of the fractions. Remember, this is p over 1, p over 1, so you could cross multiply. p times this is a times 1. Always do that. When you have an equation with fractions, always cross, always get rid of the fractions first step. All right, so we multiply the right side out. We're trying to solve for t, right? So then we would subtract p. And last step, if we're trying to solve for t, we would divide by pr. Uh, can I cancel those p's, by the way? No, because they're not common factors, right? All right let's try some more. This one is kind of in interesting. If you solve this for a, well, go ahead and try that. Okay, when you solve this for a, uh, you would probably subtract b squared first. Now, when you finish it, you, you say a is plus or minus the square root of c squared minus b squared. Now, this is where it gets kind of subtle. If this is just an equation, you don't know if a is positive or negative, and you don't know anything about a, then you'd put the plus or minus. But if we were, say, talking about the Pythagorean theorem, 
we're talking about a right triangle or something like that, then you know A is going to be one of the sides of the triangle. So in that case, because of the context, you might rule out one of the um, the plus or minus one of, one of those two. But it has to be uh, implied by the uh, problem. Okay. Let's try another one. Solve this for R. Okay, again, you have an equation that has fractions. Let's clear the fractions. Let's multiply both sides by 3. Now we're trying to solve for r, right? So then let's, what? Let's divide by 4 pi first. And then to get rid of r, or to get r by itself, we'd take the cube root of both sides. Uh, you could continue this. You could rationalize the denominator. I don't feel like doing that right now, but th that's good enough for now. Uh, let's try another one. Try this one. No, then I'll give, give you some to practice. Solve this for r. Remember, it's an equation that has fractions. Go ahead and solve that for r. Did you multiply both sides by the LCD, which is r, r1, r2? When you do that, you find you should get rid of your fractions, right? You should get um. On the left side, you just get, let's see, the R1 cancels, you have R, R2. Here the R2 cancels, you have plus R, R1. On the right side, the R's cancel, you have R1, R2. Since we're trying to solve for R, what you could then do is factor the R out of these two terms, and the last step is to divide both sides by R1 plus R2. So there you go. R equals R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Okay. Alrighty, well... Let me give you a bunch to try. Go ahead and hit the pause button. This is going to take a while. Get out a piece of paper and work these, these problems. Whoops, there we go. Go ahead and get a piece of paper out and work these problems. We'll go over them in just a minute. Okay, let's do number eight first. This is an equation that has fractions in it, right? So let's cross multiply. Remember this is 2 over 1. So you'd get you'd get ax minus b times 1 equals 2 times the quantity bx minus c. Multiply out the right side. We're trying to solve for x, right? So we're going to want to get the terms that have x on one side. Let's subtract 2bx from both sides. Let's also add b to both sides. So you get down to here. Now we're trying to solve for x, right? So let's factor the x out of the left side. And the last step would be to um, divide both sides by a minus 2b. So there's your answer. x equals b minus 2c over a minus 2b. All right, now for number 9, gee, that looks like an equation with fractions as well. What do you do if you have an equation with fractions? Well, how about getting rid of the fractions? So let's multiply both, both sides by 2. And we're trying to solve for b2. Well, there's a couple ways to go here. I'm going to multiply the right side out. Then I'm going to subtract hb1 from both sides. So you get down to here. Now we're trying to solve for b2, so now we're just going to divide both sides by h. There's your, there's your answer. Okay, now the last one. This happens to be the surface area of a cone. Okay? Surface area in terms of the radius and the height of the cone. So let's solve for h. Um, uh, let's see, I'm going to have to square both sides to get rid of the square root, but let me first divide by pi r, okay? Then I'm going to square both sides, and you end up with this. The square gets rid of the square root, and here you have s squared over pi squared r squared. Now to solve for h, I'm going to subtract r squared over, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the common denominator here. Do you see what the common denominator is? Isn't it going to be pi squared times r squared? So multiply top and bottom by pi squared r squared. You get this. You get this. Um, and um, you get pi squared r to the fourth over pi squared r squared. So then when you write that all over pi squared r squared, take the square root, you get the square root of, of this, s squared minus pi squared r to the fourth over pi squared r squared. Two things. First of all, I know I don't have to worry about the negative square root because we're talking about a cone here. H is positive. And also, what is the square root of pi squared r squared? It's just pi r in the bottom. So there's your final answer. All right, we got to go. Bye-bye.